Hello everyone, uh, this is Diana. For today's workshop, we're going to show you how to create your own customized lens using the Lens Studio software. Basically, this is like a real-time tool that allows you to create both face lenses and board lenses for snapshot. Um, so basically, um, you need to first you need to download the software from the webpage uh, lensstudio.snapshot.com/download. Once you scroll down, you click here and you click here. And um, if you are a Mac user, you can download it for Mac. If you are a PC user, you download it for PC. So now once you're done and you want the software, basically this is what you'll get once you open it up. This is the home page and this is how it looks like. So basically we're going to create like a face mask today. So you need to click on new project and um, it will take about a minute to load. So um, once uh, it loads, this is how this is how it looks like. Here's like the preview, so whatever you do here, you can see it here. So let's add, um, click on add new, go to face effects and click on face mask since we will be doing a face mask. So now we need to choose uh, a picture and now when you choose a picture, make sure that it's transparent. Um, click on add new, import. So um, let's choose this one. You can choose whatever mask you want. Um, so basically this is how it would look like um click on the no opacity text um you can notice here that's kind of it looks kind of faded so we don't want that so you click here and this is how it looks we can resize the window here so we can you know control it so you can make it smaller you can make it bigger as you can see So you keep playing around with it until you feel it looks good. And you can see whatever you do here, you can you can view it here. Okay, so this looks good to me. So now let's say you want this mask um, to appear in different faces, like not just one. Um, this is what the face index does here. Um, but first you need to click on, click here, so you can choose your model. Um, let's say you want, we want to choose a pair. So this is how it would look like. Now let's say you want it to appear on a different, like, if there were two people to, um, to take a snapshot, this is how it would look like using your um, face mask. But let's say you want it also to appear on this face. So basically what you do here is you click, uh, you right click here, then you click on duplicate. So the second face mask, you just need to change the face index to one. So this is what you will get. So as you can see, it appears on, on both faces. Um, afterwards, um, let's say you want to add like an, like an effect, like an effect or something. So add new, uh, color correction. Let's say you want to add a filter or something like that. Um, here you, you have different choices. You can choose whatever you want. You can keep on choosing until you feel like um, you like a particular one. Let's say I chose this one. So as you can see here, the color has changed. If you don't want that, you can change it. You can click Add New Color Correction. Um, you can choose black and white so this is like it makes it black and white you can also um, change it so basically whatever filter you want to choose you can choose it from here so let's say I want to go with this one or you know or with this one you can choose whatever you want whatever you feel comfortable with 
So um, basically now what you can do is you need to pair your um, you need to pair the um, the the software with your snapshot app. So you need to you need to pair uh, you like you will get like a, like a like a barcode or something like that, and you need to take a picture of it from your snapshot, and then you push it to your uh, to your snapshot. And once you do that, you basically get like um, like a notification from snapshot that oh there's that you have you've got a preview of your lens and you can view it there and you can see if it worked if it worked well uh if it need if it needed any changes and all of that so that's the good thing is that you can try it on and you can see um if, if it needs more editing if it like if you don't like it you can choose a different mask you can you know you can play play with other filters and all of that so yeah so now after you're done and you want to um, publish your lens, you just click here and then uh, a window will pop up and then you'll need to sign into your snapshot. So now I'm already signed into my snapshot and then you'll just click um, submit. Now uh, keep in mind that it will take a few days uh, like for a snapshot to review it. Um, and you can just, uh, if you want to know if it got approved or not, you just go to my lenses. And you can check if from here if it uh, if it was approved or not. Um, and basically, once it once it gets uh, approved, uh, it will be made available for for 48 hours to be publicly used. So yeah, that's it, and thank you for watching. Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to be showing you how to create your own animated object filters using Lens Studio on Snapchat. Uh, this is really easy to do. Um, as you've already seen in the previous part of the workshop, we've shown you how to create simple uh, filters and how to model them and export them on your Snapchat using Lens Studio. Uh, Lens Studio is a free application that's available to you that you can download on your PC or Mac. Um, and there are already templates available for most of the stuff, so you don't really have to do a lot of coding. Um, it, it's really fun to do, and you can customize them however you like. So to begin, this part of the workshop, what we're going to be doing is you first need to download our folder on our GitHub repository. Uh, you'll need this uh, because we provided samples for the object files and the MP3 files that we'll be using for this part of the workshop. So we'll provide the link to you. Once you're at our GitHub link, uh, just go ahead and clone and download our zipped file um, and place it somewhere that you can access it to easily. Next, uh, inside the folder that you download from our GitHub website, you'll notice a lot of files and folders that you have previously used for the previous part of the workshop. To so this part of the workshop, we're going to be specifically using the zipped file, which is available to you. Make sure you don't unzip this file, uh, because we're going to be uploading the entire zipped file to a website and animating it, which I'll show you next. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to mixamo.com. Uh, we'll provide the link to you. This is a free website that's available from Adobe. This allows us to animate normal uh, object files that you can download from practically anywhere on the internet. So what we're going to do here is we're going to upload the object file, the .obg file that we have provided to you. So uh, when you open this up, it's going to ask you to create a free account or log in. If you already have an account, go ahead and log in. If not, you can create the free account. It's really easy to do. Once you're in, you should see something like this. Uh, you will obviously not see this part. I'm going to show you how to get here. So what we're going to start with is we're going to upload a character, uh, which is the zip file that we've provided to you. So when you see this, it asks you to select a character file or drop the character file. This is basically the zip file inside the folder that you have downloaded from our GitHub website, which is called Mobile Marvels Contest. So I'm just going to drag and drop that here. And when you do that, you'll see that it's going to upload. Uh, the reason we are uploading an entire zip file and not just the .obg obj file is because uh, the zip file also contains some PNG files, uh, which are basically the colors and the, the details of the object file that we need. So since this is an Iron Man model, we need the colors, we need the details uh, to make it look more realistic. Uh, once you're uploading, it will obviously take a couple of minutes, depending on how heavy or how big your object or your zip file is. So once you've done that, uh, you will come up with this screen, the auto-rigger screen. 
uh, which is going to ask you to animate, um, to, to place uh, markers on your animated file. This allows the program, um, the Mixamo program, to kind of give it animation. Uh, you'll notice that on this website, there's a lot of animations that you can choose from. Uh, you can have your character do whatever it is you want. Uh, there's a lot of basic functions like walking, boxing, um, sleeping, dancing. So you can pick whatever you want. Now, once your file is uploaded, you will see something like this. Um, and we can go ahead and click Next. Now, here it's going to ask you to place markers. So we're going to go ahead and do that. It, it's pretty easy to do. Um, most of it is uh, symmetrical, so we can, uh, it moves the second one as soon as you move the first one. Um, again, you can choose not to have it symmetrical because some 3D objects are not obviously as symmetrical as this one, so we can just uncheck this and uh, place each of them separately. Once you're done, uh, it shows you, it guides you how to, how and where to place uh, these markers. So once you've done that, just hit next and it's going to auto rig your, um, your 3D model. This could this can take up to a minute or so. Um, so we're just gonna let that go. Uh, obviously I've already done this, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close it. But for you, just let it go. And once you click done, you will see your 3D model right here. Um, at first, this is not going to be moving, so which is fine because we have to pick an animation from the left-hand side. As you can see, there's tons of animations that you can pick. So go ahead and pick whatever you want. Um, I picked the punching, uh, the one, or you can pick jazz dancing. Uh, once you're happy with your animation, you can obviously go ahead and change these values as well, which is arm height, distance, um, whatever you want. So once you're happy with the animation that you've given your character, go ahead and download that file. What's it, what this is going to do is it's going to download an FBX file, which is going to be used in uh, Lens Studio um, to animate. So once that's done, download your FBX file, and you will end up with a file that ends with .fbx. And that's, that's pretty much it for this part. Next, we're going to open up Lens Studio. Now, when you first open up Lens Studio, you'll notice uh, recommended templates. So we're going to use one of those templates to create this project. So we're going to go ahead and click on templates, and you're going to look for animated object. This is the template we'll be using. So go ahead and click that and open that up. This will take a couple of minutes to load um, because it comes with a preset animated object, um, which we're not going to be using. We're going to be replacing it with our own FBX project. Now, once you've done that, you can obviously look at your pre preview of your Snapchat filter on the right here. So now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import our FBX file that we've just downloaded from uh, Mixamo. So we're going to go ahead and go to File and hit Import. And we're going to browse to that F, uh, FBX file that we've downloaded. So we're going to do that which is right here, it's called, for me, it's called Boxing uh, FBX. I'm going to open that up. Once you get the import options, you don't have to change anything here. Just go ahead and click Import. Once that's been imported, you will notice your, um, there's a new folder that's going to be created here. There's going to be a new folder that's going to be created here. If you don't see it, don't panic because it's still scaled down. We're going to make a couple of changes, and you should be able to see it just fine. OK. Now, what we're going to do is, to begin with, you'll notice that the boxing file, which is our FBX file, is here. What we want to do first is we're going to hold that and drag and drop it to the world class object uh, folder. So we're just going to do that. And you'll notice that it gets indented uh, just a little bit. Again. Second. Okay. 
Once you've done that, uh, you'll notice that the boxing uh, gets indented and it's now part of the world object controller. So, and it's not a separate uh, object anymore. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to, we're gonna click on the world object controller and you'll notice this inspector toolbar on your right side. Just make sure it's under world object controller and you're gonna notice this on your right side. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to animation mixer under idle animation settings and we're gonna change this value to our FBX uh, object, which is the boxing to object. And we're gonna click okay. You'll notice that the animation obviously stops because we've switched the animation from this preset value to our FBX uh, object. Once you've done that, uh, you can uh, go ahead and change the idle anim layer uh, just rename this to layer zero, and that's it. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of this preset value, and we're gonna go and right click on that and have it deleted. Now, once that's done, your object is there, but it's tiny, so you can't really see it. So we're gonna go ahead and go to World Object Controller, and we're gonna change the scale value to make it more visible. So we'll make this 45. And you'll notice your object is now here. And we can just move it around, zoom in, zoom out, see our object. And this will obviously, on the right-hand side, be doing the animation that we programmed it to do through Mixamo. You can obviously change the animation to whatever you want. Now, once this is done, the next thing uh, we need to do is we are gonna go and add some extra animation to this. How we're gonna do that is we're gonna go here under the objects panel, and we are gonna be importing um, an object called particles. So go ahead and look for particles, which is here. And you'll notice that this adds a little bit of more animation to our existing object file. Now what we're gonna do is um, we are gonna be using the move tool and we can kind of um, move this around to wherever we want. So you can go ahead and play around with it, make it whatever you want. I'll keep it here. So it's coming out of his jetpack. And we can obviously scale it to whatever we want. Right? Now, once that's done, uh, we're gonna go down here to the resources uh, panel and we're gonna click on particles and open that up. And we're gonna go to particles emitter material. And we're gonna play around with a couple of settings and make it look more realistic. So what we're gonna do first is in the inspector panel right here, the first thing we're gonna change is the uh, world position seed, we'll switch that on. And then we're gonna go to lifetime random and we're gonna change the minimum and maximum values we can make this two and seven. We're also gonna go down to particle count and increase this from 200 to 1,000. Um, and then we're gonna go down to the initial box spawn and switch that on. And we're gonna change these values um, as well. We're gonna make this 30, four, and 60. As you know, now notice, uh, we can also go ahead and move it a little bit. Um, we can have, move this down, move it up. Do you notice a little bit of um, particle animation as well? Now, once that's done, uh, we can still go back to the emitter material under the inspector and we can go down to noise, uh, which is basically to give the particles a more random motion uh, in the animation. So again, you can go ahead and change this to whatever you want. Um, basically to give it a little bit more flair. Now, once that's ready, we're gonna go uh, to the objects. Okay. Now, with every filter, we obviously have a lot of, um, a lot of other animation like music or audio and we can obviously go ahead and add um, songs or 
audio to it. Uh, we can add a component under here. Sorry, where is it? One second. Okay, so we're gonna go here under idle animation settings and we're gonna change the audio here. And you can upload any MP3 file that you may have. The folder that you've downloaded from our GitHub um, folder, you can just upload that um, if you'd like. So we're just gonna go ahead and upload one MP3 file and click OK. And this obviously, if your speakers are on, you'll notice the audio comes through right quickly just then. Uh, now, once that's done, uh, that's all there is to it. You can notice your filter here. Um, and all you need to do next is to push your lens to your device. Uh, we've shown you how to do this in the previous part of the workshop. Go ahead and send this, pair the lens studio with your phone, push the lens, play around with it. Um, you can do this with whatever 3D model that you have. You can find these online anywhere. Um, they're easy to do. Uh, there's not a lot of coding required. You have a lot of templates that are available to you. There's a lot of other um, uh, projects that you can do uh, with the Lens Studio. This is just one of them. Um, and it's fun and easy, and you can customize your own, own lenses. Thank you.